And, uh, and, and for the first part of our marriage, that was my attitude. But can I share with you that as I started to understand Eleanor, and, 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 just, and, and beyond just understanding, fellas, appreciating just the uniqueness that God has you know, wrought in her life. She is just a fantastic person who finds value in things that are just so uh, you know, interesting. I mean, it's truly, I'm just looking at this up, buddy. <laughs> but, and, and beyond that, can I just share with you, too, that I get an incredible charge out of watching my wife enjoy herself. So here's what I learned to do. I've learned, uh, you know, when we have time together, it used to be uh, before she started working, we'd have Friday mornings together. We'd, we'd sneak lunches in during the week now. That's how we have our time. But when we had all of Friday mornings together, I'd go to her and I'd say, babe, what do you want to do? And she'd say, oh, you know, there's some great uh, estate sales or junk shops down near Ellington. Would you mind driving down there? Sure. So I immediately apply man's logic to that, which is like, well, I'll get on 75 and we'll be there in 40 minutes or whatever. That's pretty fast. Anyway. But she's like, oh, but can we go down uh, Route 41 and just look at all the old houses? I'm like, <laughs> and early on when she would ask that kind of stuff, I'd be like, no. It's enough that I'm going to the junk shop with you. Get in the car. <laughs> but now I get it. If we go down 41 at 50 miles an hour and stop every once in a while to look at different things, she starts kind of just waking up. She starts just... All the stress and the life that, you know, has been, she just becomes Eleanor in that drive. And then we go to these junk shops. And listen, can I just share with you, fellas? That's the kind of wife I want to live with, the wife who has been understood and appreciated by her husband. It's a different woman. Some of you, you need to, you need to go ahead and, and get your passport stamped with a different country. Go to Woman World. <laughs> Figure it out there. It'll give you great mileage in loving your wife. Got to go quick. Couch time. Uh, kind of inherent in that idea of understanding your wife is taking the time that it will take to understand your wife. It takes times, fellas. Women have 5,000 words typically a day. I read once in a study, men have 2,000. Men come home, and uh, after being at work all day, they're spent. They've spent all 2,000 words. The woman, if she's been hanging out with a baby all day or something like that at home, she's just getting going. <laughs> and so she's got 4,000 words left. He's done, and it's just this, you know, for the guy to be able to get back. And have, but listen, fellas, if you can... If you can uh, carve out that time if you can discipline yourselves. Even letting the kids know that in the first 15 minutes that dad's home, it's mom and dad time. Beat it. Go find something to do. I love you, but we're going to get this one set first. We're going to take care of this relationship first. Spend the time on the couch, knee to knee, nose to nose, eye to eye, talking about life. Get past cliche. Get past information. Dive into intimacy. And see there where that takes your relationship. Uh, write down tenderness. Tenderness uh, in the physical uh, realm of our relationship. Uh, this goes without saying, but guys tend to move at a little faster pace uh, when it comes to that than the ladies do, usually. Uh, we've been uh, sold a bill of rights by our television shows that basically make women men, and uh, their libidos and all that stuff are the same as us. It's not true, at least, you know, uh, not always true. So, uh, guys, tenderness goes a long way. When was the last time you were sitting across the table from your wife and you were out with a bunch of people and you just started playing footsies with her? I mean, if that happened right now, she'd probably think it was like a rat or something like that. <laughs> and scream, you know, it's been so long. But guys, go to dinner sometime this week and just, you know, uh, start just touching on your wife's leg and give her the eyes, you know, and just, just be tender that way. You know, uh, the best love making that anybody can experience starts in the kitchen. You think I'm kidding, but if you walk past your wife and kind of give her a little pinchy slap on the butt, <laughs> it's the truth, fellas. That's some mileage there. You know, I try to gross my kids out every day by just giving a big old sloppy wet kiss to my wife right there in the kitchen. I do that for two reasons. I want them to know that I love this woman, and, and your mom and dad are fine, and nobody's going anywhere. We dig each other hardcore. But I also want my wife to know <laughs> that 
I'm thinking of you, babe. <laughs> and she'll do the same for me. And listen, uh, we notice, we know in our relationship when those moments are missing. It's just a different kind of, it gets very businesslike, very specific. You, you, didn't, you didn't marry a, a business partner or a, 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 you know, a co-parent. You, you married your wife, and she's meant to be treated tenderly. So take the time to do that, fellas. Write this down, esteem. Your wife's self-esteem in great part comes from you, fellas. How she feels about herself is going to come in great part from your words, so be careful with them. If she asks you, uh, do I look fat in this? There's only one answer to that. Okay? I don't care if you were trained as an engineer and you get out a measuring tape and... Well, according to my statistics, last year you were about an inch and a half smaller. Yes! Okay? <laughs> Fellas, and, 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 and guys, when guys get together, insulting is, is almost a form of, like, uh, uh, of love talk for fellas. Like, if I, if I come up to one of my buddies and tell him how stupid he is, underneath that, if you can believe this, ladies, I'm saying, I think you're really cool. <laughs> That's how we talk. You can't do that with women, fellas. When you go up to your wife and say, hey, lard butt, she hears, hey, lard butt. <laughs> Got to be careful with that. Write down downtime. Downtime. One of the greatest gifts you can give your wife is time away from you. I'm just telling you. I mean, you go to your wife and ask her, is that true? Yeah. Go up to your wife and whatever your financial means is, is, is able, walk up to her some night this week and say, babe, here's some money. Go spend it on yourself. I got the kids. Don't worry about it. She'll look at you and be like, what'd you do? But you just say, babe, listen, I know that you need time to recharge. I know that a lot of that recharging can best be done when you're away from this house, when you're away from the stresses and the whatever of this. I just want you to go. Just go. Be yourself. Have fun. See how that works out. How about help? Write that down. <laughs> now the wives, easy wives, settle down. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know, I don't know where it got started. Maybe Archie Bunker kind of ushered this in for everybody, but there's been an idea, a prevailing idea amongst American men and their, husband, their uh, marriages that uh, I, my job's at work. When I get home, uh, it's her job to take care of all this. Um, fellas, if, if you just want to communicate to your wife the love that you feel for her, uh, when she's doing the dishes tonight, if that's what she normally does, walk up to her, put your arms on her shoulders, and just say, hey, babe, I got it. Sit down. Uh, one of the men that I esteem most in my life uh, does the dishes after every meal at his home. And he's like a big, burly, you know, man's man. And I'm like, really? He's like, oh, yeah, man. He says, that's gold. You know, she just loves that. She eats that up. And I'm like, 15 minutes, a few dishes? <laughs> so, fellas, help. Help. And, and, and don't wait for the, the honey-do list to develop. Don't wait for that to be something hanging over your head and for the wife to start nagging like the faucet. You with me? Initiate help. Last two things are about protection, then we'll go home. I'm keeping you long, but I let you off early last week. Remember that? If we're going to protect our wives, the first thing we need to protect them from is loneliness. Okay, this one's dead serious. Everybody look at me. I want every pair of eyes on me right now because this is something that we must understand. If we're going to, if we're going to be on the right side of the coin flip, fellas, understand this. It's your job to protect the sanctity of your vows. What I mean by that is if you're not giving all of these things to nourish your wife, what your wife is programmed to do is to find those things elsewhere. 